less than a mile from the moon, sir. Manual attitude control is good. Roger, copy. Altitude 4200. You're a go for landing, over. Oh, oh great go. Roger, understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. 19 forward. Altitude, velocity, light. In and down. 220 feet. 15 forward. Forward, coming down, nine, three, two hundred feet, four and a half down, five and a half down. Within six feet, six and a half down, five and a half down. Nine forward. Good. Within twenty feet. Hundred feet, three and a half down, nine forward. Five percent. How many bites? 75 feet. That's looking good. Down a half. Six forward. 60 seconds. Lights on. Six. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. Good. 30 feet down two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. Ready? Down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Head. Ready? Contact light. Engine arm on. We're home. <laughs> Man on the moon. Houston, uh. Oh, jeez. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you. Mm. What? <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. Houston, uh, that may have seemed like a very long final phase. Uh, the auto-targeting was taking us right into a football field-sized crater uh, with a large number of... Uh, big boulders and rocks uh, for about the one or two crater diameters around it and it required us to on in C-66 and fly it manually over the rock field uh, to find a reasonably good area oh boy <laughs> roger we copy it was beautiful from here tranquility over so neil armstrong took uh, control threw it out of the automatic mode put it on manual and flew the spacecraft looking out the window over that that field. Around here. Right, tranquility. Uh, yeah. Be advised, there are lots of smiling faces in this room yeah, all over the world. Over. You know what really is getting to me right now? The, the justification. Right, up here. <laughs> Two right, smiling faces. Beautiful job, you guys. And don't forget one in the command module. Mrs. Armstrong, what, what were your feelings at the moment that Apollo 11 was coming toward the moon? When it was coming toward the moon, well, I was just hoping and praying everything would go well. That was my feelings. And the touchdown? And when it touched down, I must say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Mr. Armstrong. Very, very thankful that there was a successful landing. Were there any moments of concern watching it on television in your home? No, it was all going so well. We were, we were very comforted. Yes, we were faithful in the yes. successful landing. And you are going to stay up through the night and listen to the squawk box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's your life, isn't it? Uh, no, when I was married, that was the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> well, this day is Eric uh, Severide, I guess, our biggest story. We're contemporaries, and we've covered World War II together and the conflicts since then and the coming and goings of heads of state. Uh, but uh, nothing compares with this, I don't think. No, I, <clears throat> I think, Walter, sometimes that it's easier to be uh, an active participant in the world shaking things like this than an observer who can only sit. At least it's easier on the nerve ends. The, the thing that got us all downstairs in a, another office watching this in those last few minutes and seconds was the 
the steadiness of those voices of those two men, his lean prose of Armstrong, not a wasted word. He said precisely the words and the figures that he had to recite that had to be known no more in an absolutely dead calm voice uh, and yet that prosaic conversation I suppose those words uh, ordinary as they sounded are going to be reread and re-listened to for uh, maybe a hundred years and I, as an old-fashioned humanist it seemed to me a little reassuring that in those last seconds the human hand and eye had to take over from the computers if I understood exactly what was going on in that uh, in that lunar module Otherwise, I gathered, uh, if it had all been computerized at the last second, we might have uh, wrecked this Santa Maria on a, on a rock. And here's a report from CBS newsman Bob Simon at Trafalgar Square, where he joined the thousands who watched an immense television screen as the Apollo touched down on the moon. here have been feeling this very deeply and the main reaction after touchdown was my god could it really have been so easy uh, i think it's just wonderful to be on earth and to uh, live what's going on on the moon and i pray god for these people and i thank the americans also for what they've done for the world and that's what i have to say i'm very proud of the americans i think my heart. I take my heart. I take my heart off. We were aware that there was a still a long way to go, a long way to go. Uh, they had to open up that limb and uh, at that moment be exposed to the environment of the moon as well as the environment of space to which they'd already been exposed on the outside. But now they were going to be testing their suits for the first time in that environment. And you've got to appreciate there's just no way to do that on the face of the Earth. We've never been able to create uh, a state of non-gravity uh, on Earth. Uh, they were going to be in their suits and testing that. Uh, they were going to be testing the surface of the moon. And of course, uh, the, the liftoff eventually and getting away from the moon, which was going to be a terribly dangerous part of the trip. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, within ourselves, while Wally and I couldn't help being excited about that moment, as the whole world was, we were still harboring a little bit of fear for the future of the mission. There was another point there at that at that juncture, incidentally, which had something to do with our reporting of the story. Uh, we were obviously hoping we were going to get pictures back from the moon, but that had never been tried before, quite obviously, and, uh, and we weren't too sure about that. And we're getting a picture on the TV. You got a good picture, huh? Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. There's a foot coming down. There he is. There's a foot coming down the steps. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. That's a pretty good little jump. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Down there, uh, it's very fine. Boy, look at those pictures. Wow. It's a little shadowy, but uh, he said he expected that in the shadow of the lunar module. Armstrong is on the moon. Down Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. 